Hey guys, the sixth debate just took place last night, and there's excitement and disappointment. And I know that you've been waiting for this. So, who are the winners and losers of the debate last night in Los Angeles? So, let's、uh, review some of the debate highlights. Okay, so this is an article written by Tim Dickinson and Tessa Stewart. From Rolling Stone. Okay, <laughs> nine memorable moments from、uh, Democratic debates.、Uh, let's, let's just review some of them and offer some、uh, comments. Okay, Bernie Sanders. So this is a big moment. So Bernie Sanders、um, <laughs> on billionaire donors. Let's listen to Senator, Bernie. Senator Sanders, I am. Rather proud, maybe I don't know. The only candidate up here doesn't have any billionaire contributions, but you know what I do have? We have received more contributions from more individuals than any candidate in the history of the United States of America at this point in an election, averaging eighteen dollars a piece. Now there's a real competition going on up here. My good friend Joe, and he is a good friend. He's received contributions <laughs> from 44 billionaires. Pete, on the other hand, is trailing. Pete, you only got 39 billionaires contributing. So, Pete, we look forward to you. I know you're an energetic guy and a competitive guy to see if you can take on Joe on that issue. <laughs> But what is not, what is not a laughing matter, my friends? This is why three people own more wealth. Than the bottom half. This is why Amazon and other major corporations pay zero in federal taxes. We need to get money out of politics. We should run our campaigns on that basis. Thanks, Look、sir. at her.、Oh. Um, so you probably noticed the Mayor Pete's、uh, facial expressions, right? She was like, he was like, oh my God, this is coming. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Tom Steyer probably at the moment would be think, "Oh, I'm so good. There's only one billionaire contributing to my campaign, <laughs> and I have the most, you know, one dollar donors, <laughs> the largest number of dollars of one one dollar donors."、Um, yeah, that was a the big moment. It was actually followed by Elizabeth Warren. Right, so there's this real fight between Elizabeth Warren and、um, and Bernie San,、uh, uh, sorry, and and Mel Pete.、Uh, let's let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's take a look at how Elizabeth Warren attacked Mel Pete on his wine cave fundraiser. So the mayor just recently had a fundraiser that was held in a wine cave. Full of crystals and served nine hundred dollar a bottle wine.、Um, think about who comes to that. He had promised that every fundraiser he would do would be open door, but this one was closed door. We made the decision many years ago that rich people in smoke filled rooms would not pick the next president of the United States. Billionaires in wine caves should not pick. The next president of the United States, Mr. Mayor, your、okay. response. You know,、okay. according to Forbes magazine, I am the literally the only person on this stage who's not a millionaire or a billionaire. So, if this is important, this is the problem with issuing purity tests you cannot yourself pass. If I pledge, if I pledge never to be in the company of a progressive. Democratic donor, I couldn't be up here, Senator. Your net worth is 100 times mine. Now, supposing that you went home feeling the holiday spirit—I know this isn't likely, but stay with me—and decided to go on to PeteForAmerica.com and give the maximum allowable by law, $2,800. Would that pollute my campaign because it came from a wealthy person? No, I would be glad to have that support. We need the support from everybody who is committed to helping、Dude. us defeat Donald Trump. Okay, so this is very interesting dynamics.、Um, 
So first of all, I, I really like that um, male Pete is attacked. And this is actually kind of following the <laughs> unspoken rules of, of uh, debates, right? Is the forerunners will get attacked. So male Pete is um, polling probably number one in Iowa and New Hampshire, the, the early states. And so it's really good to see he actually got attacked <laughs> now by Warren. And remember, in one of the previous debates, it's Warren, who was the front runner at the time, got all the attacks. And now it's Mayor P's turn. I mean, <laughs> um, it's karma. And anyways, uh, so here Mayor P said, oh, I'm the only one literally who is not a millionaire or billionaire. <laughs> but his argument doesn't hold water, actually. I mean, he's really young. I mean, he's 37. And Warren and Biden, they were all over 70. So it's not a fair comparison, right? But by the time you are 70 or 76, like Joe Biden, you're probably worth multi-millions, at least, I mean, given what you have done. Um, and he has also a, a, a good line about this, you know, the purity test that you yourself won't even pass. Um, so that's his, um, you know, fighting back on Warren. So I think um, Warren may have scored some here, but, you know, um, overall, uh, both of them would probably got hurt. Um, and Bernie is definitely a winner of this debate, I think. Um, he first proposed, you know, um, raised this issue of number of billionaire donors, right? And like I said, you know, Tom Steyer and Bloomberg were like, <laughs> oh, I'm the only one, well, I only have one billionaire, right? <laughs> Donor, which is myself. <laughs> um, and. Uh, Bloomberg is going to the other extreme, right? He did, doesn't even accept, um, you know, other people's donations, right? He's, he's just going to use his own funding. And that also disqualified him from the debates, but he doesn't care. I mean, this <laughs> is put in air. He doesn't care. He doesn't even want to be on the debate stage. It's probably better. I mean, just like Joe Biden, right? Remember, imagine if Joe Biden does not stand there, he just stays home. Right, <laughs> he might be better off <laughs> just because he couldn't like even speak consistent like you know complete sentences sometimes, um, and many times he just gaffed. So um, yeah, it would be like <laughs> just vote, just vote, <laughs> let's just vote. Uh, that would be better for Biden. Um, anyways, so I I thought that's really hilarious and. Okay, so let's take a look at um, this funny moment. Well, it's funny, but it's also kind of, you know, uh, weird and um, disencouraging. Mr. Yang, what more? I'm over here. Mr. Yang, what more oh, can you say to the American people? Judy, I'm sorry, sorry Mr. Steyer. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let me remind everyone that I'm the... Oh, Mr. Yang, my what more? goodness. I'm over here. My goodness, she just looked at Tom Steyer and repeated Mr. Yang. <laughs> I, I was like, it's, it's totally mind-boggling. I mean, what are you thinking about, Judy? I mean, <laughs> are you colorblind? Andrew Yang is the only one with color on the debate stage. And are you, were you thinking of John Yang? That's just insane. I mean, why, why did that kind of shit happen over and over again? I mean, they left him out of the graphics, you know, 15, 16 times, and they called him Zhang Yan or Andrew Wang. And now it's like <laughs> she doesn't even recognize which one is Andrew Yan. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, but so, so as you can see that Andrew Yang has constantly been ignored and this is yet another example um, of such ignorance.
right? Ignorance is prevailing in this country. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look at Andrew Yang's response, okay? Um, which I, I think is really, really good. This is to the question, um, yeah. It's, it's kind of related to the race. And a question here from a professor right here at Loyola Marymount. There are nearly 200,000 yeah. DACA recipients, so-called dreamers, in the state of California, more than any other state, including several students right here at LMU. If you win and you reinstate DACA through executive action, another president could just overturn it again. So will you move on a permanent legislative fix for dreamers in your first 100 days of elected? Of course I would. I'm the son of immigrants myself, and I know that dreamers are essentially Americans in everything but this legal classification. I just want to return to this conversation because I think it's core. Our country is deeply misogynist, and most all of us know that. Money and men are tied together. That's where I thought Elizabeth was taking the conversation. The fact is strong societies would elect more female leaders. Strong men treat women well for the same reasons. I'm on the record saying that you need both strong men and female leaders in government because the fact is if you get too many men alone and leave us alone for a while, we kind of become morons. So it's related to our campaign finance rules because right now the fact is we operate in a fundamentally anti-woman marketplace. And that includes the marketplace for politicians. If we were to put hundred democracy dollars into the hands of every American voter, instead of 5% contributing, you'd see that rate skyrocket to 50 or 60%. And you'd have many, many more women who would run for office because they don't have to go shake the money tree in the wine cave. Thank you, Mr. Could I address? I, I, I do. I'd like to follow up. The question again, Mr. Yang, Could was I about dreamers. You pledged to move. You pledged to move on a permanent legislative fix in your first 100 days. Dreamers say that they are frustrated by Democrats' failure to prioritize their status in deal after deal. So why should dreamers trust Democrats now? I believe everyone on this stage would do the right thing by dreamers in the first 100 days. I would make it a top priority. I'm the son of immigrants myself. The fact is almost half of Fortune 500 companies were started by an immigrant or children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. Immigrants make our country stronger and more dynamic. And immigrants are being scapegoated for issues they have absolutely nothing to do with. If you go to the factory in Michigan, it's not wall-to-wall -wall immigrants, it's wall-to-wall -wall robot arms and machines. We have to send the opposite message of this administration. And as your president, I think I could send a very clear message where if you are considering immigrating to this country, and I'm the president, you would realize my son or daughter can become president of the United States. That's the opposite of the current administration, and that's the message I would love to send to the world. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Oh, that's awesome. I, I think it's just amazing that his answers, right? It, it had this great lines of, you know, you, you wouldn't have to shake the money tree in a wine cave. This is true. <laughs> So nobody expected that. Nobody expected Andrew Yang would be the, you know, the last one to call out on Mayor Pete's um, wine cave gate. <laughs> so if you recall, you know, Elizabeth Warren had this attack on Mayor Pete. And and by the way, if you um, still wonder what the um, this wine cave thing is about, um, so here's a, here's an article uh, that explains it. Is written by Stephanie um, Pagans from um, Fox News, and um, so the mayor. Yeah, so this is <laughs> okay. So here, here are actually some pictures um, uh, of the Buttigieg fundraiser in Napa, with the famous wine cave and the chandelier with 1,500 Swarovski crystals. <laughs> This is from uh, Teddy. Um, this on Instagram. Well, it's oh. so, and and recall that Mayor Pete has thirty nine billionaires uh, donating, and no wonder he's leading in the poll. Um, and and he both uh, Mayor Pete and Biden, right? They are leading in the polls because they had these big donors, right? They 
they could do a lot of ads. They open a lot of offices. They, you know, just reach out to a, a ton of people. Um, and that's why, you know, the fact that Andrew Yang is only polling five or six percent is not so discouraging because he has not had that much money um, to do advertising and, and um, you know, uh, run uh, opening offices yet. But he recently got a lot more money. Um, so he's going to peak um, probably at the right time. Yeah, so Warren actually was also invited to learn about energy industry by um, uh, Continental Resources CEO. And so she has been to a similar event and that's why <laughs> she actually knows a lot. And that's probably partly why Mayor Pete is saying, you know, this is a purity test that you um, even <laughs> cannot pass. All right, so back to Andrew Yan's performance and, and overall, I mean, the, the debates. So um, the question is who wins um, this, the sixth Democratic debate? Uh, let's, let's see what other people think. So this is from uh, Newsweek, um, Christina Zhao. So the winners, okay, so Buttigieg, is a loser, right? He got slapped around. <laughs> he was the target. And Yang is nice and relatable. If you leave too, or too many men alone for a while, we kind of become morons. <laughs> that really <laughs> landed. Um, so despite getting the least speaking time, Andrew Yang um, still uh, were able to um, deliver these really impressive lines. Um, and completely different and perspectives that he provided. Uh, I think to a lot of people, his completely a uh, fresh breath of air. New air, yeah. Um, and Biden, oh, Biden here declines to commit to serve in second term, right? Previously, previously Biden said, oh, um, I would commit to just serve for one term. But now he backed up and say, oh, I'm not certain yet, you know. I'm not even elected yet, so let's see what's going to happen. But <laughs> it's a nice thought. <laughs> oh, that's not good. I mean, these politicians, they, they you know, if you make a promise, better keep it, right? Don't contradict yourself. And Warren expertly flipped age question. Yeah, Warren had this um, <laughs> very interesting humorous line. I'd also be the youngest woman ever inaugurated as well. So when, when when they said, you know, you're going to be the oldest president ever inaugurated, he said, oh, I'm, I would be the youngest woman. <laughs> um, that's smart. And Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar has really strong performance. Yeah, Amy got the most speak time, speaking time. That's, that's insane. I, I don't know how she was able to do that. I think Andrew Yang could actually learn something from Amy. Um, is you know how to um, gain more speaking time, right? That's really really important. Uh, Amy is polling about the same as Andrew Yang, but um, she was somehow able to um, get ahead. Okay, so let's see what this is about. Um, yeah, the winners and losers. So who the question is? Who are the winners and losers? So, like I said, I think Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang um, apparently um, won the debates. And let's see what other people think. Um, actually, let's first take a look at the uh, this big data analysis, right? Um, this is from Anna Chan um, Spin Room. This is so they did an online polling, and let's see who wins. Um, yeah, so let's see, Andrew Yang, 44%, oh, Bernie Sanders, 46%, so, uh, that's really close, I, I would say, you know, they tied in this, in this poll, um, yeah, so both of them, and <laughs> Tom Steyer, 1%, people did 3%, Joe Biden, oh, these are all losers, it's even Elizabeth Warren's loser, um, Amy, well, I think Amy is actually doing should be doing a, a little better than this, but probably you know uh, 
she, I mean, a lot of people doesn't like uh, don't like her anyways. So yeah, so according to this poll, you know, there's a lot of people voted. You know, uh, almost four thousand people voted for Bernie and Angie Yang. And here's another poll uh, from Heavy.com. And remember this, Heavy.com successfully predicted um, Donald Trump's election. So let's see. Andrew Yang is 40%. Bernie Sanders is 35.86%. And then Mel Pete, 9%. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, okay, I get that. Um, 6%. And, you know, all these others are losers. Joe Biden, Warren, and Steyer. So, both in both cases, you know, big data analysis, online polling, this, this one has... Six over six thousand people voted for Andrew Yang and five thousand five hundred for Bernie. So yeah, so apparently you know Yang and Bernie are the winners according to uh, the online polling. Uh, <clears throat> so um, that's really good.